uh, huge. You know, when you don't shoot a good percentage like we did in, in the second half, you know, you got to give your team a chance every time you come down. Maybe you get a second. But at the very least, you have a chance to get your defense back. You know, this team is so quick. If they turn you over, you know, anywhere around the 10 second line, it's a layup. You know, in the you know, last two ball games, that was happening to us, you know, 13 and 17. And we're right in the game in those, you know, two, against two really good teams on the road. Uh, but it's tough to overcome that many turnovers. Coach, but you you're forced down. 17 also. What's that? You forced 16 also. Yeah, you know, we, we, we got. Uh, we got a lot out of our, our three-quarter court press today, I thought. The zone was good. The change was good. Uh, you know, you always worry about rebounding a little bit, especially with a, a running rebounder team like they are. Obviously, the big fellas, a handful. But it's those other guys that, you know, stand on the perimeter and then fly in and use their athletic ability. You had, uh, you are down four and you got uh, Woodbury hits a jump hook over Hammers and then next time down, Aaron hits a three. Uh, just in big big picture, how big were those two plays, you think? Well, they were big in a lot of ways. Uh, we weren't scoring, okay? So we needed to score, we scored. Uh, the three gave us a lead. But both baskets clearly got the crowd involved, which I think was absolutely critical. I mean, we had a great crowd today. And, you know, we hadn't given them much in the second half to, to cheer about. They scored six of their first seven possessions to start the second half. And we were coming down, getting okay shots, nothing great. But like I said, we were getting shots. Finally, Marble, I thought the biggest shot of the game was Marble's step back jumper in front of our bench when we just seemed like we went six or seven possessions without coming close. And then Gabe had the one that lipped out. Whitey had the one that lipped out. So. Fran, it wasn't always pretty, but you got the victory. Just talk about getting back on the winning track for this team. Well, I think for us it was important, Pat, to have to fight uh, the way we did. We had to take care of the ball. We had to guard. We had to make free throws. We had to be intelligent. Uh, we had a little bit of a tendency in the last two games to quick shoot the ball. You know, if you're struggling on the road, you can't quick shoot the ball. We had longer possessions. And by doing that, we were able to drive the ball, throw it inside, and get fouled. So when we're going down the stretch with a, with a, with a short or a small lead, I should say, you're getting two shots every time. And that, that's critical. What was the level of frustration for you? You got him down 13 and a half. You got him right there. You punch him in the mouth, start the second <coughs> half. It's probably going to be an easier day than it was. What, what happened? What I, I, was, I was very disappointed in, in a couple things. Obviously, they scored six out of seven. I said that already. But it was how they scored a couple of them. Uh, they just ran a screen rescreen for uh, their best three point shooter, Stevens, and he shoots an uncontested three. That's what cuts it to 10. Then they came down and they got him again. And he had already hit one in the first half where we were, he was a guy that we marked. You know, we had been doing a pretty good job on the guys that we've marked. It's been the X Factor guys that have been getting us. You know, today, you know, Davis and Peck. You know, now Hammonds, you know, he's just going to get a workman like 16 points. You know, his second shot opportunities in the first half impacted the game. But, uh, you know, we did a pretty good job on, on the Johnsons, uh, I thought. You know, those are critical guys. Just like we did a great job last game on Yogi and Bonley. You know, but you get, you know, Robinson and, and she kill you. So we're trying to cut down on that. So that was a little bit disappointing. How was Marble a better player than he was at the end of last season? Well, I think at the end of last season, he was as good as he's as he's been this year. Uh, maybe in the middle of the season he wasn't. Uh, he had a stretch where he was, I think, feeling that he really had to carry this team and he was trying to do too much. You could argue now that that's exactly what he's doing. He's carrying this team. Uh, his consistency has been amazing at both ends of the floor. You know, he doesn't rattle. I think what you're seeing is a guy that is playing with a great level of confidence you know, due to the fact that he's, you know, taking full advantage of the experience. He's played a ton of minutes. He's been through the wars. And nothing rattles him, whether we're home or on the road, the, the circumstances in a game. He just, he's not rattling. So he ran up until the last um, minute or so. 
of the game. You're, you struggle a little bit from the free throw line. Mike can struggle a little bit. Then uh, there's pretty much an intentional foul on Mike. About 42 seconds left, and then he comes up and hits two. I think in the last 45 seconds he hit seven of eight. Uh, what does that mean for for your team to be able to, to punch it through? And, and well, I think it's, it's huge for us. It's huge. <coughs> Excuse me, huge for him. Uh, he was playing great. He he got a little tentative. I took him out, I put Clemens in, and I walked down the bench and I said, "Hey, you know, we'll put you back in here. You're gonna play the way that you're capable of playing. You're, you're getting tentative. You can't play the game that way." Be who you are. Be aggressive. Go make plays. And he said, "Okay, got it. Put him in." I thought he was great. You know, no, Shumi's he's going to miss some free throws, but you keep fouling him, he's going to put you away. I mean, you know, he's missed some this year, yes, but they're they're, they're isolated situations typically. It's not like he's he's missed seven out of eight. You know, you can expect him to make seven out of eight. Where's your team at in terms of being a team that can make a run in the Big Dance? Oh, you know what? You know, I think that question is asked way too many times. Uh, you get started asking, we get that question, you know, in December now. We get it in November. Uh, I don't care right now. I want to figure how can we beat Michigan State? How can our, we keep getting our team better? When that time comes, we'll deal with that. But, uh, you know, it just it drives me crazy that people keep asking that. That's all they talk You watch ESPN, that's all they talk about. Who's going to make a run? Who's the number one seed? Why are we talking about a number one seed in February? Who cares? Some, somebody's going to be a number one seed. So you're a two seed. Who cares? Get in. Don't try to win. There's been a lot of talk mentioning Iowa in Final Four. You think those words got in the heads of your players at all? Uh, I think that's affected uh, players. I, I don't think so, Rick. I think it's a legitimate question. I don't think so. Uh, I think I would be able to say. If I saw a change in their professionalism or their work ethic, you know, we're getting a little fat-headed, I'd say that maybe that's true. But their approach has been very professional. I mean, there's no question that this last week we, we were a little bit tired. And I don't say that as an excuse. I, I hope it doesn't come across that way because it's not my intention because we travel in a first-class way. But it seemed like we were a little bit tired. Uh, I really backed them off in practice these last two days, trying to get them as much rest as I can, you know, for the, the two games coming up. With your uh, rotation, he kind of he went more eight and a little less nine and ten. Is that was that intentional today? It's never intentional. Okay, it's a function of how the game goes. In the first half, if you remember, we had a different lineup on the floor that was really in there when we we ex extended the lead. In the second half, it was a different lineup. The only change I made was I put Gabe in. I took Gabe out, put Woody in, and then put Gabe back in for Woody. Those two guys were tremendous, I thought. Uh, but, you know, I left Josh in. I left Whitey in. I left Dev and Mike in. The first half, Utah was in there. I think Utah and Zach were in there at, at that one point, and they were both great. So that's the team we have. And fortunately, you know, the, the guys that weren't in there at the end aren't pouting. They're thrilled for us to win. And, know that it might be them the next time we play. Three-way tied play. for uh, that fourth seed for Indianapolis. Big week ahead, a trip to East Lansing. Can you just talk about the, the week ahead? Yeah. Uh, Michigan State on the road. You, know, you don't have to say much more than that. Uh, plus, they just lost their last game. So they're going to be ready for us. Uh, and we'll be ready. be a great atmosphere and uh, be a huge game. Do you have to give a nominating speech for Marvel for Player of the Year? How would it go? I would argue this. I would say that nobody has been asked to do more. Uh, there's a lot of guys that are close. Okay, you know, we, we all know who they are. And I could start naming names, but you know, I play them at the two. I play them at the one. I play them at the three. He guards. Bigger guys, he guards smaller guys. I isolate them, I post them up. I set them up on ball screen action. I set them up off staggers. He plays a ton of minutes. He's going to have the ball late. Uh, I think he, I, I think he's the guy. I mean, right now. And you know, obviously, you could argue a number of other people. And I think that's the thing about our league. I mean, you start going through it. How do you pick five? How do you pick ten? Well, I. I I'm going to have to do it this week. I had to do an all-district team, which is essentially the all-Big Ten team. I 
mean, you look at a guy like Kaminsky. I mean, he was playing better than him. Petaway was playing better than him. DJ Newbill. Uh, his team isn't winning as much, although they have some great wins and they've won more. There's so many guys. I mean, because coming into the season, you're thinking Kraft, Appling. I think Appling was a guy that you would have had to look at until he hurt his wrist. <coughs> Same with Payne. Those were two of the guys you would have thought had a real good shot. But you go team by team. Stauskas and uh, you know, Kairos Levert might be playing better than anybody in Michigan. Uh, you know, who's playing better than Kairos Levert right now? There are very few people. So and that's what this league is. You know, and the fact, I think, Mike, that you asked the question, because uh, it's a legitimate question, that speaks to, I think, what Dev has accomplished. With everything that happened on social media last weekend, how nice was it for you to hear the ovation the crowd gave Zach when he came into the I was game? thrilled. Uh, you know, and, and I think the thing that, that I've tried to stress with him is just how awesome Hawkeye fans are. And, and the, the troubling aspect that I have with regard to social media is whoever did come after him and pretend to be a Hawk fan, maybe they were, but maybe they weren't. Okay. Maybe they were the fan of an opposing team that was trying to get in his head. You don't know that. And I think that's that we have to be careful to rush the judgment, uh, especially when people won't, don't put their name to it. And if you won't put your name to it, then I really don't care what you say. Say whatever you want. I don't care. It, it, it's irrelevant on this planet Earth what your opinion is. So uh, I'm proud of him. He lashed out. He regretted it. He apologized. You know, we shut it down. We're trying to lock in on being a really good team. Did you guys want to hit the panic button going in this game following those no. three losses? Clearly. <laughs> but you got down four in this game. And, and I wasn't panicking. No, but I mean, <laughs> obviously it's a, it's a big game, and you're down four and all the momentum is on the other team. I got it. We weren't panicking. No, but you, you, your team kind of a gut check, and they came. It was a gut check. Yes, it was. There's no question about that. Uh, and I think, you know, we, we showed a lot of character, no question. Not that anybody takes winning for granted, but after going through the week you just had, does this feel better than a normal win or just kind of a, a release, a, a, a kind of relaxing kind of thing? You know, I think when you've lost three in a row, I think that's a safe, safe statement. You know, it feels a little better to know that you went back to work, you put a game plan together, you executed the game plan, they made mistakes. You know, every time you put a game, there's going to be mistakes. But do we have enough toughness and talent and togetherness and character to go get the W? And that's what we have. And do you have 20 wins? Yeah, that's great. You're right, Brooksy. <laughs>